Good morning, folks, and welcome to ECMAT. Today we're going to talk about the problem like you found on page 50 of the book, which was called Putting the Cart Before the Ferris Wheel. We did this problem in class, but we're going to start with just a quick recap of what happened when we solved the problem with the original numbers. The problem told us that the diver was going to leave the Ferris wheel at a time of 25 seconds. Here's what happens in that situation. As you can see, the cart misses the diver entirely, and the diver is not having a very good day right now. So, to counteract this problem, we were able to move the starting position of the cart, and we had lots of choices of where the cart could be. To find exactly where to put the cart, we had to look at a picture of the story. We knew that the diver was on the wheel for exactly 25 seconds we are able to find that he fell for 1.16 seconds afterwards by using the equation uh, given in the book and given in the problem. We derive this based on the force of gravity on Earth. We were able to then find the total time of the experiment was 25 plus 1.16 or 26.16 seconds. Since distance is speed times time and we know the speed of the cart, we were then able to find that the cart had moved a total distance of 392.45 feet. To that number, we also had to add 35.36 feet, which came from the horizontal position of the diver, and we found that by using a cosine equation, again, that we've developed earlier in the unit. So the total distance from the starting position of the cart to the zero x-axis was 427.7 feet, and then we had to attach a negative to that because, the, uh, because we're looking for the starting coordinate, which reflects that the cart starts to the left of the center. Here's an animation of all of those original numbers coming together in the original problem. Perfect. Now let's start changing things. We're going to say that our new Ferris wheel has a radius of 40 feet, a center height of 50 feet, a rotation time of 60 seconds. The first thing that we're going to find is that the angular speed of the Ferris wheel can be found by doing 360 divided by 60, which gives us a speed of 6 degrees per second. We're also going to say that the cart goes at a speed of 10 feet per second, and that the height of the water in the cart is 4 feet above the ground. And now for the big question. If the diver is released at exactly 18 seconds, what x position should the cart initially be placed so that, so that the diver will land exactly in the cart? Before we start calculating anything, let's work through this problem a little bit. Uh, 18 seconds times 6 degrees per second will give 108 degrees. So 108 degrees is in the second quadrant somewhere around here. So we'll say that the diver is on the Ferris wheel and they're going to fall from here into the, the cart. The diver is on the wheel for exactly 18 seconds. That means that the cart also is going to move for exactly 18 seconds. Then, when the diver starts to fall, the cart continues to move for a little bit more time until, hopefully, everyone lands together in the same spot. We need to write some equations to govern the motion of the diver on this new Ferris wheel. So here we go. Um, the first equation we'll write represents the horizontal position of the diver on the wheel at w seconds. The original equation was 50 times the cosine of 9w. 50 was the radius of the wheel, so our new wheel has a radius of 40. We'll write 40 cosine, and the 9 represented the speed of the wheel in the old problem, so our new speed is 6, so we're going to say 40 cosine of 6w for the new wheel. Similarly, for the height of the diver off the ground, it was 50 sine of 9w plus 65. The 50 and the 9 are the same thing. The 65 represented the center height of the Ferris wheel. So for this new one, it's going to be 40 sine of 6w, and then we're going to have to add on the center height of 50 feet. Then we took the height equation and combined it with the equation h equals the square root of, or uh, f equals the square root of h over 16 to make this big monster equation 
The 8 represented the height of the water in the cart, so we're going to have to represent that as well. So our new fall time, if the uh, diver is released at exactly w seconds, will be f equals the square root of 40 sine of 6w plus 50. And now we're going to subtract the height of the water in the cart, which is 4 feet. We're still going to divide by 16 because that represents gravity, and gravity is not changing right now. Um, we also have the equation for the total distance of the cart traveled uh, from the start to when the diver hit the water. That was just 15 times uh, the total time of the experiment, which was doubled to W plus F. Right? W plus F represents the total time. Well, the only thing that's changed here is the speed of the cart. So it's going to be 10 W plus F. So these are all the equations that we have to govern this new story. I'm going to start evaluating all of these expressions when W equals 18. By giving us that 18 seconds in the problem, the problem writers have really given us a giant gift. Every one of these equations has a W inside. And every time you see a W, you can put the number 18 in, and then we're going to find all those numbers and label them on the picture. So the first one is 40 cosine of 6W, so I'm going to do 40 cosine of 6 times 18. Evaluate that, and we get negative 12.36 feet. Then I'll evaluate 40 sine of 6 times 18 plus 50, that's the second equation, and we'll get 88.04 feet. For the next equation, I'm going to evaluate it a little bit differently. This is a mess to put into your calculator all in one step. And we already got that part of the equation is the 88.04. Well, that part represents this part right here. So I'm just going to work this in pieces. I've done everything up to the adding 50. So now I'm going to subtract 4. 84.04. That's the whole numerator of the fraction. So now let's divide by 16. Get something like 5.25. And again, I'm not writing anything down now. I'm keeping every number in my calculator. Now I'll do the square root of the answer. There's the square root sign. And then to get that 5.25 back in, you do second and minus key. You'll get something like that. Hit enter. And you get a number. 2.29186 seconds. Uh, we'll round that to 2.29 seconds. I'm going to start labeling some of these distances on the diagram. Our first answer was for the horizontal position of the diver, and that was negative 12.36. What that negative says is that at the time of release, the diver will fall straight down and touch the x-axis at a coordinate of negative 12.36. Now, we're going to be kind of looking at total distances, so I want to treat the negative as a separate piece. I'm going to mark, leave that coordinate, but also mark uh, sort of a little dimension here that says that this is just a distance of 12.36 uh, feet. Now let's talk about the times. I know that the diver was uh, on the wheel for a time of 18 seconds and then was falling into the cart for a total time of 2.29 seconds. So the total time of the entire stunt had to be 20.29 seconds. We can use that time along with the speed of the cart to find the total distance that the cart travels from the start until the time when it catches the diver. Since the time is 20.29 and the speed is 10 feet per second, then the total distance the cart has to travel is 202 point nine feet. I'm going to leave that here, but I'll also write it up here on the diagram next to this arrow. 202.9 feet. Now I'm going to take that 202.9 and add to it the 12.36 to find the total distance from zero to the starting position of the cart. I did that earlier and got 215.26 feet. So this is a total distance of 215.26 feet. And so the starting coordinate
needs to be negative 215.26 feet. The negative represents the distance uh, or represents the direction and the 215.26 represents the total distance traveled. Here's everything zoomed out all together um, with all the pieces labeled. I encourage you to go back, rewind, uh, go through the pieces of this video, pause, stop, revisit, um, and then try that new problem that I gave you. And I know with the new problem, the numbers are a lot bigger. Uh, I think the correct answer ends up being in the 2000s-ish range. Uh, look online a little later for a complete full answer, um, or a not a solution, but a complete answer to that problem I gave you for homework. That's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this recording. I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend, and I hope you do a lot of good math.